Jessie Draper, the Valley Girl. Valley Girl. Let's talk business. I'm like the Valley Girl. Copious is a social marketplace that facilitates commercial transactions by letting individual buyers and sellers expose their social capital on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and other sources. Jonathan Ehrlich is the co-founder of Copious and former head of marketing at Facebook. Well, here we are with Jonathan of Copious. So how are you doing? I'm awesome. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Excellent. So tell me, what is Copious for our viewers? Copious is a social marketplace where you have an opportunity to buy and sell the things that you love. It's uh, about a year and a half old. Um, we started under the under the observation that if you think about all the great experiences that have emerged over the last five years, they all have one sort of central theme, and that is they're all organized around you. You know, Facebook obviously is powered by That's very your true. friends. Um, I never looked at it that yeah, way. That yeah. is true. We kind of believe that the that organizing principle of an experience that's powered by your interest and connections is going to actually impact every single industry. Um, you know, Quora for discovery, uh, Spotify for music, Pinterest, and retail is a logical place. And if you look at retail, it's really marketplaces that are ready to be reimagined. What is social commerce? So social commerce is an experience that is unique and personal to you. So what you, what you want to be able to discover is things that are relevant to what you want now, what you're interested in, and the source for that discovery is more often than not um, th those interests. So the way we see it is you, you go through an experience that allows you to connect, connect to your interest, connect to your friends, and what those friends and interests do power what you see. So um, if I am interested in uh, a certain designer, I can, I can follow that designer, and then every time that designer sells something uh, lists a new item, or any one of the folks who follow that designer uh, take an action, I can see the social and community that's built around it. And what I do then is spend time on the experience and immerse myself in that community and, and inevitably buy things. Interesting. And speaking of designers, yes. you guys are working with um, Brad Goreski. Yes. Oh, he's, he's a stylist. Yes, he's a stylist. Um, and he's on all those Bravo shows. Yes, he's he on... is. It's a Brad, Brad, Brad world. So Brad's selling his... His, his closet, essentially. So he has a, a store link on his page, and he has taken the, you know, the wonderful items out of his closet and put them up for sale. And so... That's nice uh, of him. Yeah. These new revenue streams for, for bloggers and for other influencers and, influencers and tastemakers is, is really complements the, the advertising revenue that they're building off of their pages. So... It makes a lot of sense for them. It's very easy to do, and it's good sort of brand reinforcement for their audience. This is your second startup, right? It's yes. Because Mob Shop. Yes, Mob Shop was the first, the first one. I've been involved with others, but this is the second one that I've that you've really that I've really kind of sunk my birthed. teeth into. That I've yes. given birth to. You've that's given correct. birth to this yes, company. That's right. Um, so, what do you feel like you learned the first time around that you are applying now? Oh, how much time do you have? <laughs> um, I know the first time around probably is the really big yeah, learning curve. Yeah, well, it, it's all a learning curve, but I mean, when we gave birth to uh, yes. Mob Shop, it was right at the <laughs> beginning of the dot-com boom. I mean, we raised $50 million, and we went from three people in a room uh, in a coffee shop in Starbucks uh, to eight months later, about 150 in five countries. Wow. So completely undisciplined, spending money like crazy. Very different time. Very different uh, in many ways. Um, and we, we didn't know what we were supposed to do. So... Um, you know, if I, if I can boil it down to sort of the, the core things that I've learned, um, you know, don't spend, money, don't spend money on things that don't earn revenue. Um, the only cause of death for companies is to run out of capital. And when you're, eat, when you're served food and, or money, you take it. Um, so make sure you're really thoughtful about your capital. Um, and how are you thoughtful about capital? Are you thoughtful where you take it from, who yeah, you take it from? Yeah, I mean, you from? want to think about who you take it from. You want to think about what kind of people you need, and you want to think about how you spend it. I think for, for companies that are really early stage, the product market fit is the most critical piece of the equation. Once you have that, once you know you have something working, maybe the business model doesn't necessarily make complete sense, but once you've found the itch and once you find something that people love, then you can start to think about investing probably more aggressively than you, do, than you would have previously. What are you most excited about that's going on with you guys? There's two things. One is um, it's the biggest space. I mean, there are five trillion dollars worth of stuff sitting in people's closets that's waiting to be unlocked. Five trillion? There's How do so you much come stuff. up with a statistic like that? Um, well, that's crazy. It, we're the most overbought nation on earth. I mean, think about 
uh, how much stuff people buy and how much they churn through and then how much stuff sits within their closets, their garages. And so there's just a massive opportunity to recycle that and to, and to, to bring that inventory and those stories that are really behind the inventory to life. So we feel like we're by far the biggest space that there is. And, and we kind of feel like we're at a real turning point from, a, from an experience standpoint where, you know, as I sort of said, people are, are, are expecting and needing to be, uh, to be specifically tailored to. And so what I'm excited about is building an experience that allows us to take advantage of that, that, that opportunity that uh, is truly unique to you. I mean, we have hundreds of thousands of people on the platform, and each one of them has their own unique, curated, personalized view of it. How do you brainstorm? You're very creative. How do you brainstorm? We're pretty focused, so we uh, we kind of set a, 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 a tight time frame around something. We sort of set up the, the question, and we spend some time together in a room, like f- let's just say for an hour, where we will sketch out a bunch of ideas, and then we break. We don't sp- some brainstorm sessions go for hours and hours. We don't do that. We do sort of tight time frames for an hour, and then we let it marinate. Um, I find that um, ideas get better as they, as they marinate. Yeah. And you also... Uh, tend to find these ideas come up at the most random times. For me, I like to ride my bike, and so I'll be riding, and all of a sudden, something we talked about a few hours ago, a problem we were trying to solve, an answer will just come to you out of, out of the blue. Because Isn't it's it funny been, how it's like the back of your mind yeah, is always working on it? It is, and in my case, it's always working, because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how not to, uh, to not be. What is the one piece of advice you would give to an aspiring entrepreneur? So I've worked for some of the best entrepreneurs and been exposed to the best entrepreneurs. Mark Andreessen was on our board. Um, at, uh, at Mob Shop. I've had the pleasure of watching Mark and the cadre of entrepreneurs he's assembled around him. And the only consistent true thing I know about being an entrepreneur is that it doesn't really matter how smart you are, even how good your idea is, because the idea is always wrong, so whether it's 5% wrong or 95% wrong, who knows? <laughs> the only thing that really matters is just your grit. These people never quit. They're completely and utterly focused and tenacious on solving the problem that's in front of them. That's the only thing I know. It's the only consistent characteristic across everyone. So if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, you just have to ask yourself whether that is you. And if it's not you, it's going to be a lot harder because building companies is hard, uh, painful, and ugly. And only through your sort of force of will or the force of will of your founding partners or, or your team will you get through it. I love it. I really do. I heard that you love Harry Potter. I like Harry Potter. My son and I like Harry Potter. So I was thinking maybe we could give you a Harry Potter quiz. Let's do it. Let's do it. High five. High five. Jonathan is about to take a Harry Potter quiz because he says he knows a lot about Harry Potter, he and his son. But I don't I don't know if I believe it. So we're going to give him a quiz. But every single one that he gets wrong, he has to put on a pink prop. So this should be fun. First question, from which platform does the Hogwarts Express leave the King's Cross train station? Okay. 10 and a half, 9 and 3 quarters, 13, or 7? I'm going to go with B. B, 9 and 3 quarters. I'm going to go with that one. 9 and 3 quarters, you were correct. High five. High five. Next question. Gryffindor's house colors are scarlet and gold. What are Slytherin's house colors? Blue and bronze, yellow and black, green and silver, or blue and silver? This is a tough one. Can I, can I use a lifeline? You could use a, you can use a lifeline. Yeah. If this is when you want to use your lifeline. I'd like to use a lifeline because this is actually really hard. This is a really hard one. So can I call him? Yes. I'm going to call in my son who's 11 who knows more about this than This is your lifeline. Perfect. Okay. Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Hello? Ryan? Yeah? Hi, buddy. You're on TV. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. Your dad would like to use you as a lifeline for his Harry Potter quiz. Okay. So the question is, Gryffindor's house colors are scarlet and gold. What are Slytherin's house colors? A, blue and bronze, B, yellow and black, C, green and silver, or D, blue and silver? C, green 
silver. Sea green and silver. Okay, let's see I if that's so, correct. That is correct! Woo! Woo! Way to go, Ryan. Good job. Good job! I would have got that wrong, buddy, so I'm glad you're here. <laughs> you just made this whole day. That was so you made this whole day. awesome. What position does Harry Potter oh. play on the Gryffindor Quidditch team? Beater, keeper, chaser, or seeker? D, seeker. Seeker! Woo! Good job! You're too three good at this. Three. You're not well, even, we have this have... whole thing of props. Do you want me to put one on anyway? Sure. How about this? this that that means you win when I you win? wear the tiara. Right. That means you won. Good. Yeah. Well, high five again. Thanks. You were fantastic. Yeah. Great to meet you. Quite the Harry Potter player. I'm like the Valley Girl. I'm like Jonathan from Copious. What does Copious mean? A lot. A lot. Copious amounts of stuff. Copious. A universe of things. Copious. So Lots. there is a copious amount of pink on this set. There is. And now it's time for your dits moment. The world's, your, the world's your oyster. The world is your oyster. Yeah, I believe that's been said once or twice before, not by me. Weird, I've never heard it. It's, it's, I believe you. 